Today I'm going to tell you something about the use of bonsai tools or tools for creating bonsai. This is in response to many of your constructive comments that you've given uh, back to me on the videos that I've been producing in the last year and many of you have asked for some advice on the use of tools for bonsai. So here we go. I brought along with me lots of the tools uh, that we use on our nursery and I will explain to you what all these different tools are used for. Before I proceed any further, let me make it absolutely clear that pruning and cutting is at the basis of all bonsai. If you are not prepared to prune and cut, you will not make a great deal of progress in bonsai. You've got to be able to prune and be prepared to cut if you are to make bonsai. Having said that, there are all sorts of tools that can be used. When you think that bonsai was started by the ancient Chinese about 2000 years ago, they didn't have all these sophisticated bonsai tools that we have today. So they made do with very basic tools, perhaps just a knife or I'm not sure even scissors were invented 2000 years ago, but it may have been. But I think most of the cutting was done with a knife. In one of my books, which you may have come across, I think it was the third book, which is called Creating Your Own Bonsai from Everyday Garden Plants. And in that book, I used just a pair of ordinary garden secateurs. They were secateurs like this. If you look at that book, there is not a single bonsai tool which was used in creating the bonsai in that book. I deliberately did that because I felt that you can make bonsai without having to use these complicated and expensive bonsai tools. I know bonsai tools help, but you don't need them. So that hopefully may debunk a lot of the myths. So if you can get by with just a pair of ordinary garden secateurs, you're welcome to do it, and I can guarantee you that you can make quite a lot of bonsai just by using this. But good tools do help. So let's talk about some of the bonsai tools that are now available. Many of these tools have been available only in the last 50 or 60 years since the post-war uh, period when manufacturing became more common in Japan and China. But before that, the tools were pretty basic, mainly confined to these pruning shears or scissors. You can have tools made of either the ordinary black steel, which rust, or you can have stainless steel tools, which have been introduced in the last 30 or 40 years. And of course, the stainless steel tools are very good. I have a set of stainless steel tools, if you can have a look at it. This was a set of tools presented to me when I went to uh, Omia for the first ever World Bonsai Convention. It says 5th of April 1989. And these stainless steel tools I have used for the last 30 years and they are still as good as new. I use them virtually every day. So if you can afford to have stainless steel tools, they are certainly the best tools you can get. The black steel tools are also fine, but they do rust and you have to keep sharpening them and keeping them rust free. But there's nothing wrong with these. As they say in life, you get what you pay for. So if you spend money on a set of good stainless steel tools, they will last you a lifetime. Now let's look at all these different tools. The most basic tools are your cutting tools, which is like the secateurs or scissors. There is quite a lot of confusion about scissors, especially new to uh, bonsai. You get scissors like this with the big handle. This is stainless and this is in the black steel. They're exactly the same design, it's just that one is stainless and one is in the black steel. And these are the cheap ones which are sold uh, and made in China. And they are very, very cheap. I remember going to China about 10 or 15 years ago, you could buy these for about 50 uh, US cents for a pair. But the good Japanese ones can cost, cost quite a lot of money. So these uh, scissors with the big handle, 
uh, what we call root cutting shears. We use it for cutting the roots. And the ones with the long handles, let's take them out of the packaging. These are this pair of scissors like this, which have long handles and sharp, small blades. These we call twig pruning shears. That's a stainless steel pair. That's another stainless steel pair made by a very famous maker. But of the twig shears, the most commonly used ones are what we call the satsuki shears. They have these long handles and a small blade. Can you see the difference? These are called satsuki shears and these are called the root cutting shears. This is probably the tool that I most use. If you were to ask me which is the most useful tool to have if you were to buy just one tool and starting off in bonsai, I would say this is the most useful tool that you can purchase when you're doing bonsai. You can get it in black steel or you can have it in stainless steel. The black steel, as I said, are good, but they're not as good as the stainless ones because the black steel ones do get rusty and you have to keep sharpening it. So this is the most useful tool in scissors. So you get these different designs of scissors, root cutting ones and the twig cutting ones. And the root cutting shears, I've seen some, which are absolutely massive. They sometimes come, look at that one, look at the size of that pair of root cutting shears. I dare say if you have a large root ball, they're almost like tailoring scissors. So they are mainly for cutting roots. So don't confuse the two. You can cut twigs with it, but they are better kept for cutting roots. One word of advice about the use of these tools. Never use the twig cutting shears for cutting the roots. Because every time you use any implement for cutting roots, the soil and the sand that is in the roots, in the soil, will blunt the blades. So if you use twig cutting shears to cut the roots, you can use it, but you will blunt it very quickly. The next most important tool in bonsai are what we call the branch cutter. This is a branch cutter. This is also a branch cutter. If we come closely and look at the shape of the blade, you will see that there is a distinct difference in the blade. This blade, some people call it a concave. There's a lot of confusion. It's concave because it's like that. But the edge is straight. This is called the wen cutter, W-E-N, or the knob cutter, because the blade is curved. And this can cut into a branch and actually gouge a bit of wood out of it. Um, I think I should show you how to use this. I'm going to show you how we use these different tools. The ordinary secateur is just good for ordinary cutting like this. This is a maple that we're about to work on. So even if you use this for cutting a branch, you can get close, but you can't get that close. You will always leave a little snag. The branch cutter enables you to go really close into the trunk. I'm going to cut this off. And you can see it makes a very clean, smooth cut right up to the trunk. It doesn't leave a little snag. The when cutter goes even further. See, when you use a, a branch cutter and cut close, you will always get, when the branch heals, you'll get a raised surface. But the when cutter can go deep into the cut and actually gouge a piece of wood out of the surface and make a concave incision. So like these little cuts that were made some years ago with the branch cutter, they become proud with a, with a period of time. But if you go around with a wen cutter, you can gouge into wood and take that out. So the wen cutter is used for that particular purpose. In recent years, I would say maybe in the last 30 years, They've introduced a new type of branch cutter, which is called the hybrid cutter. And the hybrid cutter is a hybrid between the two. So the ordinary flat concave cutter and the full concave or the wen cutter 
has now been combined into one tool which we call the hybrid cutter. This hybrid cutter, if we come close, we will see the form of the blade. It's like a parrot's beak. So it is curved and it is also in that shape. The when cutter is fully round, which gouges out a circular or hemispherical piece of uh, wood out of the trunk or branch. So you can see that the hybrid cutter is an amalgam of the two, an amalgam of the straight flat concave and the fully concave cutter. So this tool replaces the two tools. So I'm not a very good salesman. So if you were to buy, instead of two tools, a wen cutter and a flat branch cutter, the hybrid cutter does the work of the two tools combined. So if you buy a new hybrid cutter, it will do the job of these two tools, the flat concave and the wen cutter. Nowadays, the Chinese are making virtually every manufacturer uh, product in the world, and I'm very happy to say that Chinese tools, there are many different makes of Chinese tools, are as good and uh, maybe even better than some of the Japanese stainless steel tools. There has been so much advance in the quality of Chinese tool that it's quite incredible. So this is a, a Chinese tool and it's a hybrid cutter and it's highly recommended. There are different variations of the branch cutter. You can also get some branch cutters that have a very, very narrow uh, blade. I'll just show you one because sometimes you can get a situation where you need to get in between two branches and if the branches are very close together you can't get the uh, cutter in. So they have now produced, or it's been on the market for, for quite a few years, a type of cutter that has a very, very narrow blade. So if you come close and have a look at this, you can see how narrow the blade is. It's almost like a parrot's beak. See, compare that to this. It's really minuscule compared to that. So this is a useful tool to have. So if you want to add to your collection of tools, this is a very nice tool to buy. So much for the different branch cutters. We will now go to uh, some other cutters which are also used in bonsai. And the first one that you may have come across and you may have seen me use it in some of my videos is called the branch splitter. The Japanese call it the nutcracker or the branch cracker. I don't know why they call it a cracker because I think you crack a branch with it. You cut into the bark. I think I've shown it to you on some of my videos. You split the trunk so that you make it a thinner and it's able to bend the branch. So the branch cutter or the branch splitter is a nice tool. And again, you can have it in different sizes. That is the standard size, which is 200 millimeter long, but then, I used to buy these Japanese tools. This one is about 14 inches long. Still in its original grease blue packing. Look at that. And as you can see, made in Japan, genuine Japanese tool. And these will probably last a lifetime. So if you have a very thick trunk, this is the tool to use. There is another tool which is similar to the branch splitter, but it should not be confused, although you can use it for the same purpose. And that is this one, which is called the root cutter. You see the blade is much broader and wider, and it is rounded in shape rather than just flat like that. You can use it for splitting branches, but it's mainly used for cutting the roots at the bottom. If you have a very thick root and you want to cut it, but you don't want to use your branch, uh, cut it and blunt it, keep a separate tool for cutting the roots. So this is called the root cutter, which is different from the branch splitter or the branch cutter. 
Now let's come to yet another tool, all these pliers type tools. This one is called the gin pliers. The gin pliers, you may have seen us use it when we strip the bar. It is useful for bending wire. You can bend the ends of wire. Supposing you have done some wiring, you come to the end of the wire, you can do this with the gin pliers. It's very useful for doing that. But the main use is for stripping the bark. The serrated edge grips the bark, you crush the bark, and then the bark can peel off. Again, it comes in different lengths, different designs. So that's the brass splitter. But you may have seen me use on my YouTube videos a, a tool which is like this. We've got several of these tools. And in case you were wondering what it is, this is my favorite gin pliers. It may look a bit odd, but this, believe it or not, is an Indian tool which we call the chimta. And this is used by the Indians for cooking. They have these great big frying pans with no handle, so they use it for gripping the hot uh, griddle of the pan with this implement and it's used for making chapatis and parathas. And this is my favorite tool for ginning. In fact, I prefer this to the Japanese tool because it's got a nice long handle and it's got nice serrated edges. So this is a very cheap tool. Those of you who are in, in India can buy it for no more than 10 rupees, which is like 10 pence. So very useful tool as a substitute for the gin pliers. There's also a variation of the gin pliers called the duck bill, duck bill pliers. So this one also does similar sort of work. There's all sorts of variations on a theme, but they do very similar type of uh, tasks. And of course, coming back again to these two handle uh, tools, these are the bonsai wire cutters. The bonsai wire cutters, they come in different designs. And this is the most common design. I find that there is a Chinese type of cutter. They come in many different designs, but I can assure you that they do a much better job than ordinary electrical pliers. Many people try and save money and just use ordinary electrical pliers, but the action of the bonsai wire cutter is quite unique and a wire cutter like this can cut thick wire up to about 10 millimeter thick and it'll cut through like butter. So this is the most useful tool uh, to have, better than the ele electrical pliers. So much for all these uh, two-handled tools. I think I've covered most of them. Um, there is, of course, these little cutting implements. This is a Swedish hunting knife they use it for skinning animals. It's got a lovely handle, lovely wooden handle. I love to use this for stripping the bark when you've made a gin. Some people use the Stanley knife because it was made by a company called Stanley Tools. So this is useful. And of course the ordinary kitchen knife is also very useful. So those are the useful tools. Um, then the root rake is another very useful tool. Cutting and raking the roots is one of the very essential tasks in bonsai. So the rake is a useful tool, but I've seen people use all sorts of improvised tools, like that funny little fork, but they're not as efficient as a genuine Japanese rake, made of stainless steel, really solid. They don't bend backwards. And of course the handled ones would have the single claw or the double or triple claw. They're also useful. Again, you get variations of this which can be used for uh, scraping the roots. Now these are sickles. I've seen them used a lot in Japan, and of course, after seeing them used in Japan, we use it on the nursery ourselves. As you can see, it's called a sickle, and it is used for taking the root ball out of the pot, especially the in-curved pot. When a bonsai grows an in-curved pot, the roots get completely uh, stuck 
all the way around. And because the pot is in curve, you can't get it out of the pot easily. But if you cut round the pot with this, like cutting cake, it will then release the thing and come out quite easily. When we do videos about repotting, you'll see me use this tool. But this is the sickle which is used for repotting. And again, it is a useful tool to have if you uh, have nothing else. But if you were really stuck, you can always do the same job by cutting with an ordinary knife, but it makes it harder. Some of the brushes you may have seen in bonsai, these brushes are used for brushing the bark, especially of the junipers. And after carving, they give a nice clean appearance. So this is used for brushing. All these tools you will see me use on the videos as and when we come to doing it. Uh, I haven't talked about clamps. Let me just show you some clamps. Now these are what we call clamps or jacks. As you can see, you put it on a branch and then you can bend the branch with it. They come in all different sizes. They are sold on the market as bonsai accessories. Personally, I don't like using them because I find that if you want to bend a branch, using the right grade of wire will probably do the job much better. So as you can see, I'm not a very good salesman because I'm not selling this product. But uh, some people like to use it. Some people like to use all sorts of different contraptions and instruments. So if they want to use it, they're welcome to use it. But in my opinion, I have seldom used this uh, implement because I don't find it very effective. This, in case you are wondering what it is, is called a branch bender. It's just a lever that you can use for bending a branch. So if you have a very difficult branch, you can use this and just lever it and lever it down. So it's just a lever or a jack. Uh, this is a useful thing. A lot of people make it themselves, but they're very cheap to buy. So they are sometimes used for bending thick branches. Uh, so as you can see, there are so many different types of tools. And of course, nowadays, you can buy tools that come in a kit form like this. So you get all sorts of tools. Most of the useful tools, I will just show you some of the tools that we sell on our nursery because that gives you a very good idea as to what tools you can buy. These are Chinese stainless steel tools, extremely good quality. So in this box, there is a flat concave cutter and then there's a well cutter. There's a pair of stainless steel wire cutters. There's a root pruning scissors, twig cutting scissors and a root rake and then a little brush for brushing the surface of the soil uh, or whatever task you want to use. So that is a very good standard kit. So you can see all the useful tools that are there. And this is another set of Chinese bonsai tools with black steel. And uh, they have a wen cutter, a side branch cutter, trimming scissors, and two pairs of root cutting scissors. So I would say this is quite adequate. I think you need to add perhaps a root rake and that would complete the set. So these are very useful gifts. We find that we sell a lot of these tools because friends of the and family like to buy these as presents for their loved ones who do bonsai. As with all tools, the more you use them, the more they will get worn and they will eventually get blunt. Also like this tool, it's been left out in the wet, so it's become rusty. So what you do when that happens, you've got to clean them up. So there are all sorts of uh, devices for cleaning the tools. This is a special tool which is used for removing rust. As you can see, just by a little rub, all the rust has come off. See, that's so rusty. Just with five or six strokes of that, can you see all the rust has come off? It's almost magic. Uh, then you get different types of whetstone which you can use for sharpening the blade. Uh, there are different ways of sharpening. Never sharpen on the inside of the blade, but just on the outside like that. Go around doing that and that will soon sharpen it. And this is a very useful tool that I've always had, which is called a diamond cutter. They have fine diamonds studded in there and you can use it for sharpening the blade. 
So these tool sharpeners are quite useful. You can buy them from any tool store. You don't have to buy from a bonsai nursery, but it's a very useful thing to have to keep your tools in good condition. Uh, these scrapers we use for scraping moss. Uh, many of these things can be improvised. Another thing which I would like to show you is the use of these uh, saws. When you have a very thick branch, the saw is indispensable. Most of these saws are Japanese saws. This is a folding saw. So they fold and open up. This is a traditional Japanese folding saw like that. Very, very sharp. And of course, we are very fond of using this big saw called the silky saw. Again, made in Japan. Beautiful saw to use. So this is useful. And we use the old saws. Once you get a bit blunt, we use it for cutting the root ball. You may have seen me do it once or twice. Rather than tease all the roots and cut it with scissors, if a root ball has a lot of roots, I just cut it in half like cutting cake. So the old saws, once they become blunt, I use it for cutting the roots. So that is useful to have. But if you're using a saw from scratch, from new, try not to cut roots with it because it will blunt this thing very quickly. So keep them just for cutting branches. This is a pair of large loppers if you have a very thick, large branch. There's nothing like using these large loppers for cutting branches. And then finally, these turntables. I know that there are many, many types of turntable you can buy. You can buy these traditional Japanese turntables, which are very nice. They come either in rectangular shape or round shape. But for years and years, I used to just make do with my own homemade turntables. These are made from the base of office chairs. Can you see they're just the base of office chairs? And I screwed a piece of plywood on top of it. And these are my favorite turntables. A turn turntable gives you the right height and it enables you to rotate the tree in whatever position you want to. I will sign off by letting the camera pan on top of these different tools. If you need to ask more questions, do come back to me uh, with questions on the YouTube and I will try to answer them for you. Thank you very much.